Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comments sections of my videos and if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll always do my best to try and answer them. Question here is from uh, Alan Kefalver and uh, he has actually three questions. One is in spot AF when I focus the green box comes on and then disappears. Uh, how can I keep it on as in darker conditions it's hard to see the box. And then the second question is CAF versus CAF with tracking. I, I assume you want to know what the difference is. And, and that's actually related to another question I'll answer here uh, shortly. And then uh, also you're asking about the 150 to 400 F4.5, how to program the buttons. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that lens, so I'm not going to be able to show you uh, how to program those buttons. Uh, if I, I wish I had. If someone would like to donate one to me, it would be greatly appreciated. But... Um, let me go ahead and start with your first question, and then for your second question, uh, I'm going to combine that with another question from another viewer. All right, so let me show you the challenge here first. Uh, basically, what's happening here is you see that little uh, black gray box outline. That's identifying the uh, target point that we're using. And you can see where in low light, you know, if I underexpose this shot, that's virtually impossible to see in low light and when i half press the shutter button um you know the little green dot comes on and even if i hold the uh, shutter button down or half press it and hold it that little green dot also disappears right so we can do two things to improve this uh user interface so to speak first let's just go into the menu and we're going to roll over we're in the wrench menu and we're going to go over to the uh, cog menu here and let's see we want to find grid settings here and that's on page five and then we'll click OK on here and the default setting is preset one which is what we were looking at just before let's change this to preset number two and then we're going to go down here to color of preset number two and we're going to change this to be green as bright a green as we can make it and I wish I wish OM system would just give us a color wheel instead of these RGB values because not everybody understands RGB values. Like if I want the purple color, right? How do you do that? But we're going to make it simple. We're going to turn off red by scrolling up. The maximum value is 255, right? And then I'm going to go to green and just push down just to go right to the highest value of 255. We're going to keep blue off. And then we're going to turn the alpha up to 100% and this is the opacity so there's we're not gonna be able to see through the green thing but that's okay right that'll make it as bright as possible on the screen now you can see that the green box or that the the black rectangle is now a green rectangle uh, on you know any any surface so even though we're grossly underexposed here we'll be able to see this uh, at night now it may make it a little harder to see it on a on a white uh, background but not so much right it's fine so now when I have pressed the shutter button you can see the little focus point but the challenge is still that it disappears when we uh, have pressed the shutter button even though I'm still holding the uh, shutter button down the green dot has disappeared the, the focus point so we can set that we can change that as well so what we need to do is go back into the menu Go back to the AF menu, go to page two, select the AF area pointer, and then we're going to have three options here. We're, the default setting which we're on now is on one. We can turn it off, we don't want that. And then we can do on two, which displays the green target frame while we have a focus lock or we're using continuous autofocus. So we'll click OK on that. So now we're on on two. And now you'll notice when see if I can lock as long as I have pressed the shutter button and we have a focus lock it'll stay on that green dot so we can kind of take our time when we're composing right if we need to and this should also work in CAF and that'll give us a little bit different display it's showing all the different points that it's using for CAF and then one more note I want to make is when we were in the menu over here and we were doing the grid settings uh, where is it here you don't have to have the grids on but if you do display the grids for example 
when you go back to your live view, you're going to have very bright green lines all over your live view as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, and then your last question about CAF plus tracking ties in with another one from here from uh, Santa Mike 212 And he says, Rob, when you get the time, would you go over tracking in detail? Uh, on one subject detect on and off. Thanks, Mike. Okay. So uh, I'll try and make this as simple as possible because um, it can be a little bit confusing and I'll give you some recommendations. All right, so basically we have four different ways to continuously autofocus on this bird, assuming you know we're in some sort of continuous shutter mode, for example. And if we're using a small target point and we're in CAF, basically what we're doing is we're gonna be tracking this bird ourself, right, by hand and eye, just like we did it in the old days. Now, we also have uh, CAF plus tracking. So what the autofocusing system is going to do now is you point your target box on the subject that you want to track, and it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a bird. It could be a car or a hat, a bottled water, etc. Uh, but when I have pressed the shutter button, it's going to try and identify what it is we want to focus on. And then no matter where we move our camera, it's going to try and track this. And the problem is it's not very reliable. As you probably saw in the first frame, it, it lost focus, especially if we're, if we're tracking a very fast moving subject and it goes out of frame and then goes back in the frame. It's very easy to lose until we kind of get the uh, focus box back onto the bird. Uh, if I want to focus up here, you can see it's just jumping all over the place. So I don't recommend using this mode at all, ever. But let's continue on. We're going to leave it in this. Let's go to Subject Detection in the AF menu on page 2. And let's turn on Bird Detect. So now we have bird detect plus tracking. And if you look at, uh, you know, you can see the white box that's identified the bird. And that's because I have the green box on it. But if I move the green box off of the bird, it's not going to focus on the bird anymore. It's going to focus wherever I have that green box. So I need to be on the bird. Now it'll focus on the bird. <clears throat> so what I recommend is when you're using subject detect, Use a much larger autofocus area. We'll center that. Or what I like to do is I just use all points. So now, no matter where I go into the frame, if I go over here and take a picture, it's going to focus on the bird. Or if I go over here, it's going to focus on the bird because now it's looking at the entire frame to try to focus on that bird. However, when I have pressed the shutter button, you can see that the tracking box is still on. And OM Systems actually recommends not using CAF plus tracking and subject detect at the same time uh, because they're really two different operating uh, focusing modes. So when you use subject detect, just use CAF like that. Make sure you select all points and then pick the subject subject that you want to track. And this is the most reliable way to use the subject tracking. Now the reason OM system said not to use CF tracking plus subject to tech together is because the tracking uses, you know, shape and color uh, independent of what that shape is to track the subject. And that takes priority over the actual subject tracking uh, by identifying what the subject is. In other words, um, it's going to misfocus sometimes because it's going to try and focus on a color and shape before it focuses on the bird. And when you're in an environment where, you know, you're tracking something and you're panning a lot, it's very possible that you're going to lose uh, the subject in the AF system and it's going to focus somewhere else. Now, my advice is don't use CAF plus tracking ever. It's terribly unreliable because it, it uses not only that color and shape uh, to try to identify the subject, but it also tries to be predictive and try to you know predict where the subject's going to move to. And I think that's partially the reason why it keeps losing 
the subject when it's trying to track it. See if uh, with the AI subject detect, you know, the birds and cats and dogs, whatever, that operates by not trying to be predictive, but it simply looks at the frame and tries to identify the object every frame. So it's going to identify the object, move the focus points to that object, take a picture, and then when you start to take the next picture, it's going to look for that object again. It's not going to try and predict where it's going to move to. Uh, and as you can see, and from my personal experience, it's extremely reliable and very accurate. So always use CAF plus subject detect, never use CAF plus tracking in any scenario. Now the only exception to this is when you're in movie mode, the camera forces you to use CAF plus tracking when you want to use subject detect. And um, it's actually pretty reliable in movie mode, but you know, in photo mode, they recommend using CAF plus uh, subject detect without tracking. All right, and that's all I have for today. And if you found this video helpful, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation on the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this for you and they are greatly appreciated. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.